Hey guys, recently we made a video about some of the best places for rock hounding around the US. And some of you asked us to cover other places around the world. So in this video, we're going to go over a few of the places you can find in our neighbors to the north and south. It's time to gem hunt across North America. Our first stop is Canada, specifically Ontario. In the small town of Quaidville, you can stop at a general store, snag a $10 permit, and go to town down in the barrel pit. It's an open cut little dig site full of great stuff. Barrel was first discovered there in 1897. They opened the place up in 1926, and in 1927, over 45,000 pounds of barrel was extracted. Over the next decade or so, ownership changed hands as the place was developed, removing tons more barrel as well as a little feldspar. It's 76 meters long, about 15 meters wide, and varies between 2 and 11 meters deep. The place is constantly receiving dump rock, meaning you can find all kinds of stuff, no hammering necessary. You can find smoky quartz, a cool variety of fluorite called cranberry fluorite, and even amazonite, a beautiful blue feldspar used for beads and cabochons. On the west side of the pit, you can find a pegmatite bearing tourmaline, and on the east side, an albite prothetic microcline quartz biotite pegmatite. The pit is open from May to the end of October, so get your calendar out and plan that trip. Staying in Ontario, we have the Princess Sodalite Mine in Bancroft, Ontario, the so-called mining capital of Canada. There, you'll find a rock farm. I can see the look on your face already. Dude, they're rocks, not potatoes. What are you talking about, rock farm? The site regularly receives loads of fill dirt and rock from nearby local mines, so the supply is constant and different. This consistent shipment of material means that the variety of gem and minerals that you can find in the Princess Sodalite mine is kind of crazy. There's no fee either. You just pay for what you walk out with, $2 a pound. Just make sure you bring your own shovel, maybe a rock hammer, probably some gloves, and a pair of knee pads isn't a bad idea either. Sodalite, the mine's namesake, is not commonly found in other parts of the world. It's known for its lovely royal blue, but it can also be gray, yellow, green, and even pink. It's great for carvings, but it's also attractive when set in jewelry, too. Who knows, maybe you'll find some at this rock farm. Now for our southern neighbors, Mexico. We're headed to the Ojala Mine in the small town of Mapimi in the state of Durango. This area is considered a semi-desert and is very mountainous, varying in elevation from hills to valleys. Kind of like the Great Plains of the U.S., lots of natural beauty but not very many tourists. The town of Mapimi itself is quite small, with only about five or 6,000 folks living there. The mine itself is known for Adamite. Pure Adamite is clear, but it can also be a little yellow or even green. You can also find fluorite, wolfenite, lagrandite, scoridite, and the ever-popular calcite. All of these minerals can come in remarkable forms and colors. If you're looking to buy a specimen from this mine though, be careful. Some minerals being sold as having come from the Ojala mine are actually from other places. Minerals like minotites, smithsonites, and pyromorphites. Guess you'll have to go for yourself. Last on our list is also in Mexico. It's not as secluded as the Ojala mine, and you may have some tourist competition out there. In the central highlands of Mexico is the state of Chiapas and the city of San Cristobal de las Casas. Here, you can find cultural landmarks and a generally warm climate, attracting visitors from all around the world. However, being the highlands, the altitude changes mean you may want to bring a jacket. It gets cold up in the mountains. Well, except on El Chichon. El Chichon is a volcano. It became famous when it erupted in 1983, its first recorded eruption since 1360. There are lots of volcanoes throughout Mexico, contributing to the local geology in the form of lots of igneous rock. In this particular region of Mexico, you can find famous Mexican amber, also called Chiapas amber. This stuff is known for being clear almost all the way through. Well, that is except for the stuff with inclusions in it. Loads of insects and plants have been found trapped and preserved in Chiapas amber. Arthropods, crabs, and even scorpions can be found in these little golden droplets. Chiapas amber tends to be about 23 million years old or so, dating back to the early and middle Miocene epochs of the Cenozoic era. This amber is mainly recovered from fossil-bearing rocks, unlike Baltic amber, which washes up on the shore after popping loose from the seafloor. The largest amber mine here is in the town of Simojobel, about a three-hour drive from San Cristobal. So don't forget to include an amber hunt on your itinerary for your next trip to Mexico. Well, that's all we have for today, guys. What part of the world would you like us to cover for our next gem hunting video? Let us know down below, and of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on our next gem hunt. See ya.